Good morning, everyone. A warm welcome to you all here in the church, in the church hall, and joining us online today. You're all very welcome as we celebrate our harvest Thanksgiving. Due to the coronavirus, things are a little bit different uh, this year. However, it's important that we take this time and this opportunity to gather together and thank God that he has provided another harvest for us. Once again, there are activity boxes for the children. This year, our choir have been unable to gather together to practice. Uh, so I'm glad to have the worship group with us this morning, leading some of our worship today. And thank them for that. I'd like to say thank you to those who have decorated the church in a simpler way, perhaps, than usual, but very effectively. Thank you for that. And thank you for the gifts that you have been bringing along. They will be distributed by the Antrim Food Bank. Uh, don't forget also your Harvest Thanksgiving uh, envelope gift day, which goes to support the wider work of our church 
throughout uh, the whole of the world as well as across Ireland. Final announcement, if the members of the committee would please meet for a few minutes in the church hall after the service this morning. And finally, with uh, regret, we announce the death of one of our senior members, uh, the death of Mrs. Ruby Patterson, late of Valley Mather Road, occurred on Friday. And to Rosemary, Sandra, Jacqueline, Mandy and the family circle, we extend our deepest sympathy at this time. Due to coronavirus restrictions, a private service of committal will take place later today. Let us worship God as we remember his great promise given to Noah that while the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall never cease. We thank God that he has once again kept that promise. We're going to join together and we remain seated, as has been our pattern recently, as we sing a modern song from the pen of Keith Getty and Stuart Townend which tells us of creation and its work and the Father work in it. The creation sings the Father's song.
Let's join together in prayer. Let us pray. Lord our God, creator of all things, ruler of the changing seasons, Lord of the harvest, we come together on this your day to worship you and bring our thanks and praise. The heavens tell of your glory. The wonder of your works is shown in earth and sea and sky. All your works praise you, O Lord Most High. So gladly we add our voices of praise and thanks to you today. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Heavenly Father, you are the great provider of all our needs. Only our sins can we call our own. And so with shame, we bow before you and confess our faults and failings. We confess that we have taken your generosity for granted. And your gifts to us is nothing more than what we deserve. With sorrow, we admit how we have not given you the honour and glory that is due to you. We have not kept your ways and your laws. And we have neglected to share your love with others. Lord, spare us that sad word from Scripture. The harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. Bring us, therefore, to a true repentance, so that we may know your forgiveness, freely given to us through your Son, Jesus Christ, who died to save us from our sins. And by the power of your Holy Spirit, may he work within us, so that we may live not just to ourselves, but to your glory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, we pray. Amen. We're going to read scripture together again today and again. It will be on the screens for you. Psalm 19, let's hear the word of God. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day they pour forth speech. Night after night they reveal knowledge. They have no speech, they use no words, no sound is heard from them. Yet their voice goes out into all the earth, their words to the ends of the world. In the heavens God has pitched a tent for the sun. He is like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, like a champion rejoicing to run his course. It rises at one end of the heavens and makes its circuit to the other. Nothing is deprived of its warmth. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The decrees of the Lord are firm, and all of them are righteous. They are much more precious than gold than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the honeycomb. By them your servant is warned, and keeping them there is great reward. But who can discern his own errors? Forgive my hidden faults. Keep your servant also from willful sins. May they not rule over me. Then I will be blameless, innocent of great transgression. May these words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart Be pleasing in your sight, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. We thank God for his word. Boys and girls, a word or two to you. I always think it's absolutely amazing that this little blob we call our world, the earth, is there in the middle of a vast universe spinning around supporting an amazing amount of life. And it's been doing that for such a long time, from the very beginning, in fact. The book of Genesis tells us the story of how God made creation, how from the very beginning, first of all, there was light out of darkness. And God said, it's very good. Then he made a space and separated the the sky and the, the waters and said, it's good. Then God made the land and the seas and he said, it's good. God looked at all the beautiful trees and flowers and things that he had made and put on the earth and said, it's good. 
Then he continued and he created all sorts of birds and fishes. He blessed them and told them to multiply and fill the earth. And he said, it's good. Then God made all the animals, different ones of different sizes and shapes, all kinds of animals. And finally, he made man and woman to be especially like him and to be special relationship with him, to look after this world, to enjoy it. And when God had finished, he said, very good. And God saw everything that he had made, scripture says, and behold, it was very good. God has given us this wonderful world to enjoy. Sadly, we haven't, boys and girls, been very good at it. And maybe my generation and older people have a, a lot to blame in that. But you young people need to take very seriously what God has given us and look after it. And I know young people nowadays are much more thoughtful of the environment. It's a gift from God. But like any gift, we have to look after it if it's going to be of use to us. So let's today, as we're surrounded by various little bits of God's creation, remember what he has made, how wonderful it is, how precious it is, how unique it is. And let's make sure that we look after it. And thank God that he has made us to be special to him. We're going to sing a song uh, which I think you have sung in Salt, our Sunday school, before. And uh, maybe you'll know it, maybe the rest of us won't know it so well. Uh, but it says, everywhere around me, tell me who made all of creation, who designed the wonders of nature, whose idea was pattern and colour, wonderful to see. Everywhere around me, I can see the hand of God.
world. It's an often used word. If you put it into a Google search on the internet, you get about nearly 12 billion hits. That's a number of uses of the word on the world wide web. Not only, of course, is the world used to refer to this spinning planet in space that we live on, but we apply it to many other things. There's even the luxury cruise ship called the world on which you can live permanently if you have the money. We talk about the human world, the world of work, the plant world, world of football, whatever. There are indeed many different worlds in God's vast creation. On the earth and in the waters and in the skies. Worlds that are visible, worlds that are invisible, infinitesimally small, but all working together according to God's great plan. There are reckoned to be over 4,000 species of animals, 10,000 species of birds, 300,000 of flowering plants, and 1.6 million species of fungi. Each one is a little world of its own. But all these pale into insignificance when we look at the heavens. The psalmist knew nothing of our modern scientific methods of calculating distance in light years, nor did telescopes. Yet when he looked at the heavens, he was amazed by their glory and the glory of the one who had created them. The logical conclusion for him was that the existence of creation implied the existence of a creator. The nature of the creation implied that its creator was wise to plan it and powerful enough to do it. So complex a creation, David reasoned, demands a creator who can do anything, who knows everything and is present everywhere. Maybe you too feel a bit like him in a starry night when you look up and see the incalculable number of stars in the sky. Maybe you saw Mars very bright this past week. When you consider each one of those stars is like our sun with planets. I don't know, do you not find it difficult to believe that it could all have happened by chance? I do. David says that this creation is a wordless book. A book that everyone can read. One that requires no translation. Day after day, night after night, he says, God's speech pours forth. In the light of this, I think you have to admire the faith of those who believe that everything came by chance. In writing to the Romans, Paul quotes this psalm in chapter 10 as part of his explanation why Israel rejected the gospel and what that rejection did to the nation. The point making by Paul is that God's voice of power in creation prepares the way for God's voice of grace in the gospel. When we look at the creation and surmise that there must be a great architect, a great creator behind it, then it should lead us on to want to find out more about him. Helen Keller was born in Alabama in 1880. When she was 19 months old, she came down with an illness. The illness didn't last long, but it left her completely deaf and blind. At that time, her only communication partner was a girl called Martha Washington, six-year-old da old daughter of the family cook. Between them, they were able to create a sign language. And by seven, she had 60 signs to communicate with. Later, thanks to a teacher, Anne Sullivan, she developed a, a sophisticated system of communication. When the American Bishop Phillips Brooks, author of O Little Town of Bethlehem, first started to communicate with Helen about God, she told him that she always known there was a God, but she didn't know his name or what he was like. And isn't that the situation today? Many people who are not deaf and blind like Helen don't know about this one true God, even though they see so much evidence around them. Despite the universal message that a wonderful creation shows to us, many do not believe. 
trouble is, despite the miracle of harvest, which we are thanking God for again today, the simple fact is, many people don't come to know God through his creation. Yet it's wonderful, isn't it? And that's why we're celebrating it today. But it was limited when it comes to telling the full story about God and his purposes in the world. People need something more to understand it all. And that, of course, is what God reveals when he reveals himself through his son, Jesus Christ, the word of God made flesh. When he wrote about God's work, David used the general Hebrew word for God. But from verse 7 on, he uses the gen, a, a particular word, a personal name for God. Jehovah, we sometimes translate it. Though he's revealed in creation, it's only when David knows him personally, knows his name. The heavens declare the glory of God, he says. But scripture tells us of the word of God himself. David tells us here in this psalm that the law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. Some advice for us to follow. The word of God is law. Gives us wisdom to know this God, the God that we see all around us at work. The word of God is instruction. None of us needs convincing, I'm sure, of the value of an education. And we can't learn a skill or a craft without someone to show us and teach us how. And God's word does that. It teaches us about how God, who God is, and how he has done things, and what he is doing in the world. And God's word commands us, without boundaries there'd be chaos and confusion. God sets us commands, and among those is to look after this world. You know, there is an inbuilt human need for worshipping something, money, fame, fortune for many. But the Bible tells us, and David reminds us, the only one truly worthy of worship is God. We're not unique in our culture in having a harvest festival to celebrate the beginning of harvest. Many cultures, it's celebrating how great we human beings are. But we know that we can only do this because of God and what he has done for us. Through his meditation on the wonders of creation and through what he has read in the scriptures that he had at the time, David concludes that he isn't worthy to stand before God. He knows he's all holy and he's not. He recognizes his sin and his unworthiness. And we too, as we stand with thanks here today, are reminded of our unworthiness. And like David, who confessed his sins and threw himself on the mercy of God, we have the promise of God's grace to us for all the things we have done wrong, even the ways we've misused this world because of Jesus and what he has done for us. So as we celebrate today the wonder of creation, and we thank God for that he has kept his promise and that we have had a harvest, we can know God through that, through what he has done, through the symbols that speak of his great creating power. But much more than that, can we not be thankful that he has revealed himself through his son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Let's pray. Gracious God, your heart abounds with goodness and your hand pours out abundance. We praise you for the continuous cycle of seed time and harvest, the order of nature. We bless you for the beauty of autumn and its generous yield. We thank you that you do indeed supply all our needs. So accept our thanksgiving and our praise today for the cycle of life and the joys of living. We praise you for creating a world that is filled with beauty and variety. We thank you for revealing yourself through it. But most of all, 
we thank you for creating us in your image, giving us a task as caretakers of this world. And when we failed in our tasks, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. Lord, we thank you and praise you that you're a creator God and that you're a recreating God who makes all things new. Lord, we thank you for various people today who have made the harvest possible. We remember our farming community in particular. We know that life has not been easy for them with the vicissitudes of weather up and down, wet, too wet, too cold, too warm, too dry. Lord, our world that we've misused seems to be changing in its climate. We pray for our farmers as they struggle with that, with the uncertainty of what will come with uh, leaving the European economic community. Lord, we pray for those who produce our food. We pray for those who distribute it. And Lord, we know that at this time, the first thing on our minds is the coronavirus. For we believe that your will is perfect and we don't understand everything that you do. Teach us through this time, Lord, uh, that you are in control of everything. But we pray for those who are suffering at this time, those who are suffering because of the disease, uh, those who are hard pressed, particularly in our National Health Service and social care. We pray for our government and the difficult decisions that they has to be made at Westminster and at Stormont. Give wisdom to them. We pray that people will respect all the restrictions and that this virus may be kept in check. Lord, we remember those who are in mourning today. And particularly, we remember the Patterson family. Lord, we thank you for your church, and we pray that we will continue to be a shining light for Jesus Christ here in this place. Lord, we bring these and all our prayers to you now, in the name and for the sake of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Saviour. Amen. We close our service with a well-known traditional hymn. It wouldn't be harvest if we didn't really sing. We plough the fields and scatter the good seed on the land.